Everything matters. How we wake up, how we dress, how we eat, how we meet, how we train, how we practice, how we rehab, how we recover, how we treat one another, how we treat everyone. Second half, that's our style. That's what we represent. Showing that fight, showing your urgency, showing that effort, the technique, and the violence that we stand for, guys. Welcome to Jets Game Day with Robert Sala. Here is your host, Eric Allen. It's week nine, Jets Bills today at MetLife Stadium. Coming up, we'll hear from Cynthia Freeland, Brian Baldinger, and we'll have the morning tea with Caroline Hendershot and Ethan Greenberg. But I'm Eric Allen alongside Bart Scott and our guy, Big Pipes, Eric Coleman, inside the studio. Bart, the Jets are five and three. What lessons did they learn in last week's loss to the Patriots? Well, you can't turn the ball over. And I think that's a lesson that they've always known, but it's even magnified even more when you go against a team like Bill Belichick that's not going to beat themselves. Understanding that punting is a good thing. Understanding that flipping the field is a good thing. And sometimes you have to win the, to win the uh, war. You've got to win the battles first. And it's all these little battles in between. It's like doing your job, not getting, you know, ill-advised penalties and things of that sort. So I think when they looked at that game, they said, listen, we're probably a better – more talented football team, and we let one get away. E, the Jets definitely did think they let one slip away. Is the resilience going to be tested today against the Buffalo Bills team that's won the division two years running and is off to a 6-1 and one start? Yeah, their resilience is going to be tested today. Uh, they're playing against a very tough Buffalo team, and they're going to have to play disciplined football. Uh, no turnovers, no mental mistakes. Sound football in all three phases is going to be the way the Jets are going to be successful. Uh, they've shown in these last couple of games that they've won uh, prior to this loss uh, to the Patriots, if they play consistent football, they run the football, they take care of it, play great defense, that's the recipe to winning. Bart, he's talking about running the football. Yeah. The Jets right now offensively, definitely in transition mode without Elijah Vera Tucker, Brees Hall, Corey Davis banged up. What should the approach be from offensive coordinator Michael Fleur? Well, you have to establish a run. You have to win on first down. You have to give Zach Wilson an opportunity to still have the option or run or pass on third down. You want to get in third and manageable. You can't have third and long. Listen, but this Buffalo team does not blitz at all. So you're going to have to burp the baby a little bit and try and buy time. But I want to see Zach Wilson trust the pocket because last week I feel like he had a great pocket, but he retreated too much. And that, that nullifies the block of the tackle when you escape where they're blocking the person. There's going to be opportunities to gain yards with your legs. If you're Zach Wilson, you have to climb in the pocket to put those linebackers in distress because this is a team that only rushes four. So the same lanes that you throw through are the same lanes that you have opportunities to run through. E, uh, bottom line, Zach Wilson's still 4-1 and one as a starter. He had some passes that he'd like to take back against the Patriots, but were you encouraged by what you saw from Wilson to Wilson? That's Garrett Wilson, his second 100-yard game in the National Football League. And how about the tight end position? Tyler Conklin, six catches, 79 yards, two touchdowns. I love the chemistry from Wilson to Wilson. Uh, Garrett Wilson is a very explosive receiver, and it seemed like every time he got the ball, he wasn't trying to go down. I'm trying. He was trying to feverishly get to that end zone, and, and I love that tenacity. I love the love for the game that Garrett Wilson has. Uh, when you, and then when you have Tyler Conklin making those big catches, relieving some of the stress from Zach Wilson, that is a big uh, help uh, for this young quarterback. Pressuring those safeties down the middle of the field and those linebackers, as Bart talked about, is going to be vital for Tyler Conklin. It's going to make things easier on the run game, and it's going to open up things outside. We all know Buffalo loves to play from the top down. A great start, fellas. Uh, for more on Tyler Conklin, here's Cynthia Freeland. It's time for Maximum Altitude with Cynthia Freeland, presented by NFL All Day. Adjusting to the losses of Elijah Vera Tucker and Brees Hall, along with the addition of James Robinson, who only played 20.7% of offensive snaps against New England last week, meant some new strategies for the offense overall, which also meant the increased usage of tight end Tyler Conklin, who was one of the best pickups from the 2020 free agency period league-wide. Against the Pats, Conklin's overall stat line was six receptions for 79 yards and two touchdowns. But digging deeper reveals that half of his catches and 52 yards, along with one touchdown, came on passes of 10 plus air yards. And the other three receptions, 27 yards and touchdown, came on passes of fewer than 10 air yards. He also caught half of his passes for 33 yards and one of his touchdowns against press coverage, which Next Gen Stats defines as three or fewer yards of cushion. 
After eight games, Conklin's 32 receptions for 309 yards and three touchdowns already rank fifth most in terms of catches and seventh in yards by a Jets tight end in the last 10 seasons. His 32 receptions alone are the most by an entire Jets tight end group since 2017. If he keeps this pace, he'd have 68 receptions, which would be the most by a Jets tight end since 1988. While season stats are fun projections, his ability to block helps add to his overall scheme versatility and reliability, which helps keep defenses off balance and reduces turnovers. The Bills' number one scoring defense is a tough test, but Conklin figures to be a steady and impactful force for this offense and for Zach Wilson. We'll see what the coaching staff dials up for the multi-purpose tight end today. Don't go away. We're back with an exclusive interview with general manager Joe Douglas. Stay tuned. Joe, what was trade deadline day like for you? Uh, it was good. Um, you know, we, we did the trade earlier uh, last week for, for James Robinson and um, felt like that was a great opportunity to, to, add, a, to add a back to a, a, a really good back and a really good person to our locker room uh, today. Um, tougher decision um, to uh, trade Jacob Martin uh, to the Broncos um, ultimately is a, is a move we felt um, gave us a little bit more flexibility in the future and also opened up some uh, some play time. We feel like we have great, great depth in our DN room and so um, opens up some play time for some of our other DNs. Back at the league meetings, you said the expectation is we're going to be playing meaningful football in December. Here you are as November starts at five and three. What do you think? Look, I mean, we're five and three. We, uh, we put ourselves in a position where each game becomes a little bit more important. And uh, obviously not happy with the outcome last week against New England, but we've got an opportunity to get back on track. And so, look, we, we, there's a lot of football ahead, a lot of games to be played. You know, the focus is on Buffalo. Uh, we know the challenge that that's going to bring. I uh, have a ton of respect for that organization, uh, that team. And so we, we know we're, we're going to have to be on our A game and play our best ball. But, you know, we're, we're, we're focused on the task at hand. And, and uh, this week, that's, that's Buffalo. What do you like most about this team right now? I love the camaraderie, um, love the energy, and, and that starts from the top right with Coach Sala. Love the day in, day out energy, enthusiasm, passion, and you can see the guys come together. You know, whenever there's a big play, you see the entire unit coming together and celebrating together. And you can see that, that chemistry, that camaraderie. Everything you saw developing through OTAs and, and training camp, you're really seeing, seeing it manifest here in the regular season. And uh, it, it's good to see these guys come together and, and play for each other. How much do you like that blend in the locker room? That's something you talked about in the offseason. The veterans, the grizzled vets, and also the rookies who are just starting out on their NFL career. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, really, that's a really cool aspect of our team. And, and I know I talked a little bit about it back in training camp, but uh, to see the guys like Dwayne Brown and, and Sauce Gardner kind of come together and. You know, you see, you see them in the team meeting, and they're having fun, and you know, talking a little, uh, you know, talk, talking a little crap to each other. It's fun to see, but uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a good mix, and, and we've got, we've got a, a great group of veterans that do things the right way, and kind of show, show these young, young players the, the right path of, of how to act like a pro, how to be a pro, and uh, again, credit, credit to the players, credit to the coaches, uh, for, for getting this culture to a good place. You mentioned Sauce before, the swagger that he brings to the table. Right now, he's tied for the league lead in terms of PDs. Um, what can you say about his development and also the way he's fit inside the locker room? Because guys talk about his confidence, but they also say that, hey, he brings that bravado, that swag, but he's a guy that you gravitate towards. Yeah, I mean, so I think when you talk about confidence, like his confidence is genuine. There's not a fake toughness, fake confidence element to him. And I think the, when guys talk about gravitating, they talk about his charisma. Um, there's an authenticity to Sauce. Um, you know, his, his energy is infectious. Uh, his, the, the, way he, uh, the way he competes, the way he talks trash, the way he, it's, it's infectious and it's from a, it's from a good place. 
and uh, he just wants to get better, but he also wants to get you better. What about Garrett? Soft-spoken, but he's got a big game. Yeah, you know, Garrett, Garrett from day one, you know, it, it's, uh, it's never been too big for Garrett. He's quiet confidence. You know, I feel like he's, he's mature beyond his age. Um, and then on top of that, you know, his approach, his, his confidence, his competitive nature, uh, the exuberance, the, the fun that he has playing football. It, it, it's really fun to see him and Sauce go up against each other. And, uh, you know, the, the talk that goes back and forth there. But then, then to also see his natural, unbelievable athletic ability come out when he's running routes, when he's catching the ball, when he's adjusting. Um, so he's a, he's a supreme athlete. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, E. After the break, we're back in the studio talking Jets football. And Brian Baltinger takes a look at what to expect out of Buffalo. Don't go away. Jets Game Day with Robert Sella is brought to you by MetLife, the official insurance company of the New York Jets. Welcome back to Jets Game Day. Eric Allen, Bart Scott, Eric Coleman, uh, Robert Sala and Joe Douglas both said this week e, that Zach Wilson is the Jets quarterback. The one thing that stands out to me about this Jets team offensively, they're tied for second in the National Football League with explosion plays, so they are making plays down the field. Yeah, they're making, they're making big plays. They're taking shots down the field. They have a ton of explosive players, uh, but you can't win games consistently doing that. You have to find a way to run the football, make, play the, the slow man's game. Make sure that it's, you stay out of the third and long situations to make things easier for your quarterback. There's plenty of explosive players on this Jets team, and they're going to come. Just make sure you take your time. Don't rely on those big chunk plays. Bart, again, let's get back to the offensive philosophy here. Can you talk about pass-run ratio? Last week it kind of got away from the Jets. Yeah, you want to be balanced. And this is an opportunity to get Elijah Moore and Denzel Mims involved into the game plan. I would like to see them get touches in the first 15-play script so that they can feel involved. You know, when I used to play against Chad Johnson, Husmanzada, Plexico Burris, it was always important for us as a defense to make sure that they didn't get any touches early in the game because receivers naturally become disinterested, right, because they don't get into a flow. It's almost like being a basketball player. You have to see that first shot to go down, and then now you understand the game, you're in the flow of the game. I would like to see them get, you know, Elijah Moore and some jet sweeps because you need to add him into the run game as well because you love what Robinson and Michael Carter can do and Ty Johnson, but we know Elijah Moore has the home run speed that Brees Hall had. That's the only way you can kind of mimic that productivity. And then I'd like to see Mims maybe get some shots early on to make the, the receivers and the safeties of the Buffalo Bills respect the fact that, yes, we do have a tall, big, rangy, fast receiver. And if you sit flat-footed at the sticks because you think that we're just going to be running short, shallow routes, we will blow by you. So that will open up the field verse both horizontally and vertically. And that's what you have to establish early to make the defense respect all parts of the football field, not just in between the tackles or not just in the middle of the field with Conklin. For more on Buffalo, here's Brian Baldinger. This is Baldy's Breakdown. I'm here for Jets game day with Robert Sala, and I want to take a look at the Bills. Up at the top is Stephon Diggs. He's going up against Rasul Douglas. He's a route runner. He's a router. So at any point right here, the release, that little hesitation, out and up, he gets passed for Sewell Douglas. All right, so the result is it's his seventh touchdown catch of the year. He's got 55 catches in seven games. He's their go-to guy. Fortunately, when he lines up on that side, the Jets have Sauce Gardner because Sauce is going to see him when he's on that side all day. They move digs around. But here he is against Jamar Chase, and Jamar Chase kind of tries to get by him right here, but Sauce has been awesome with the ball in the air. Finishes that play, strips Jamar Chase of the ball, and wins that route. But inside the Buffalo Bills defensive front, okay, when you look at what they have here, getting after Aaron Rodgers last week, like there's Gregory Rousseau, 50. Okay, there's Ed Oliver, 91. Bob Miller, 40. They're all high first-round picks. And you got Phillips in the middle pushing the pocket. Now, these guys run stunts. What they're going to do is try to get you to move, drop your eyes, and then chase you down. All right, I think they've got 21 sacks as a group right now. So for the Jets, they've got to be able to protect. All right, and at times last week against New England, they did a good job. Like, this is a good looking pocket. The ends are wide, the middle's flat, and Zach can make these kind of throws to Tyler Conklin. Like, they need a pure pocket. 
to be able to protect against these guys. Like, here it is. Like, when you can protect like this, you're doubling Matt Judon, their best rusher. You got everybody else boarded up right here. Clean pocket to be able to make throws like that to Smith on the run. That's what they need to do to Zach Wilson this week against Buffalo and a fierce pass rush that the Bills have. Coming up, Ethan and Caroline give us the morning tea, followed by final thoughts from the studio on today's matchup with the Bills. All right, Ethan, another week, another great game for Garrett Wilson. He now has 34 receptions through eight games, and that ties Wayne Krebet as the most for a Jets rookie. That's pretty good company to be in, and with Corey Davis still dealing with a knee injury, you would imagine that the Jets would want to rely on Garrett Wilson a little more against a Bills defense that's stellar. However, a couple things to keep an eye on. All-Pro safety Jordan Poyer dealing with an elbow injury, and then All-Pro cornerback Tredavious White might be back in the lineup to make his season debut. Interesting. Okay, but on the flip side of the Bills' defense, their rush defense is crazy. They've only allowed 95 yards per game this season, and before last week, they hadn't allowed a running back to get over 50 yards. That's crazy. You know the Jets want to run the football. Season low, 15 attempts last weekend against the Patriots, but in the Jets' four-game winning streak, they averaged 29.8 attempts. So, Ooh. like I said, you know the Jets want to run the ball. You talked about the Bills' D-line. How about the Jets' D-line? Amazing. Six sacks against the Patriots. The defense has a whole 12 tackles for loss. But Josh Allen, different challenge. Yeah, he's cut from a different cloth. And while he's 5-2 and two against the Jets, he's been sacked 11 times. He's thrown for five interceptions. And he's had six fumbles. And that's the most fumbles he's had against any team in his career. Look, stopping Josh Allen, very important. Yes. AFC East game, very important. Yes. What's more important than both of those? Tell me. Today's salute to service game. Oh, 100%. I mean, we wouldn't be here without any of our military personnel, so we thank you for your service. Here's to you, and that's the tea. That's the tea. This segment is brought to you by HCL Tech, supercharging progress. Eric Allen, Bart Scott, and Eric Coleman. Bart, our linebacker, EC, our safety. Jets defense, tall task today because they're facing one of the top players in the National Football League, Josh Allen. How did the Jets bring him down in the pocket? Well, you know how you have to know how to bring down a big, tall, athletic quarterback, understanding that he's always going to have you in the sight line. You have to also, if you're on the right side, you have to stay on the right side. If you're on the left side, you have to stay on the left side. When I'm saying right side, left side, I'm speaking on the shoulders, right? You have to always make sure that that head is out here because you can't allow him to break contain. Shoulder here, circle the defense. You come back, you want to try and attack it. So now if he makes you miss, he has to make you miss this way, and you can come back and still get opportunities to get the football. You have to make sure you can never come down the middle of anybody that you're trying to tackle, especially a quarterback that has certain protections within the pocket that other players don't have. When he's out of the pocket, E, that's a different story. Yeah, I mean, you're going to do all you can to keep him in the pocket, but once he does break pocket, you have to treat him as if he's a tight end, as if he's a running back. This is not a quarterback running the football once he starts scrambling. Josh Allen is big. He's physical. You have to put a body on Josh Allen. Pursuit angles are going to be big, uh, tackling this quarterback, and you have to you have to put a body, put chest to chest. Okay, when so tackling. I'm in the open field yeah, right now. A lot of times in the open field when guys are tackling Josh Allen, he's big, he's 6'5". They want to go tackle, attack his legs. They want to go down and they start to commit early. That's when you see Josh Allen hurtling these defenders or running through tackles. You have to be able to, to get take that angle, get a body on him, get your head across, and, and tackle him by committee. He has to be 11 hats in the ball, all gas, no breaks. That's how you stop Josh Allen once he, tack once he breaks the pocket. Defensively, who are you watching for the Jets to? For me, it's C.J. Mosley. C.J. Mosley is going to have to be a, a huge role because he's the middle of that defense. He's the bridge between the front end and the back end. He's going to have to keep his eyes on Josh Allen. If he breaks contain, it's going to be C.J. And, and, and Josh in space. He's going to have to make those tackles and make them pay the price. Pay the toll for, for, for pass and go if you're going to decide to be a football player, not a quarterback. Uh, for all the talk about the Bills' offense, they got a real stingy defense. Who are you watching as far as the Jets' offense is concerned? On the Jets' offense, I'm looking at Michael Carter. He's going to have to be a, have a big day today. Make that Bills' defense respect the run of the Jets. Buffalo is a defense that loves to play from the top down. They like to rush forward. They don't blitz much. If you can effectively run that football like the Green Bay Packers did against this Bills' defense, the Jets are going to have a big day. Bring us home. High five. Jets Bills, 1 o'clock.